following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Arcanum number six, indecision, related with the letter Vav, which means and in the Hebrew language and symbolizes connection to hook, to unite one thing with, with another. It is also related with the word, the word yug in Sanskrit, which means union. In order to have a union, you have to hook. And of course, with the word religare, or religion, is the way in which we uh, receive knowledge. The letter Bab of this arcanum <coughs> is. Uh, related with the property of hearing, listening. Of course, now we have to emphasize that uh, it is not just related to the faculty of hearing in the physical plane. But also with that chakra, which we mentioned uh, several times in different lectures, the chakra Vishuddha, which is related with a magical ear, the faculty of understanding, listening or hearing the word of God which is related with the world of archetypes, symbols that we know to understand and comprehend. This is why when we pronounce the four letters of the sacred name of God, yod He vav He then we find that the third one is Bav. Associating this uh, holy name with the tree of life, we find then the upper triangle, Kreter Chokma Bina, Yod He Bav. So Bina is Bav. It means understanding. Remember that the second name of God is always explained in different 
levels, different ways. And this is one of them. In order to explain the letter Vav. And that's why the Kabbalists state that Vav is related with the faculty of hearing, listening. <coughs> and uh, we, it means and. Uh, obviously, it's possible to understand where we know how to listen. And this is precisely the point in all the lectures, in all that related with the word of God, which is not a word that we, had, uh, that we read literally. That's why the Master Samael on the Or states that in the Hebrew language is hidden the wisdom. Who brought this sacred language or the alphabet of this language into the world? It was the angel Metraton, whose name was Enoch when he was alive. He brought the alphabet, the language, into the planet Earth in order to teach the Kabbalah, the tree of life, the language of God. So, this is why the Hebrew language is associated with Kabbalah. Because every single letter is related with a number, is related with a symbol. So when we read the words in Hebrew, we must know the meaning of each letter and associate one with the other numbers in order to go deep into the tree of life and to see behind the word. Because remember that it's written that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And uh, to understand, to comprehend the word of God is indispensable in order to do it, to develop the chakra vishuddha, the faculty of hearing, which is a power related with the word, because that chakra is exactly at the level of the throat. It's a word that we speak, the word that we listen. And that's why the mysterious sephira that, which is knowledge, is precisely located at the level of the throat of the Arikampin, the vast continents, Adam Kadmon, the primordial man, which was created in the beginning. This primordial man, of course, we will say, the primordial emanation of the Ein Sof, which is always represented with the letter Vav in Hinduism. They represent this Vav or Bina with the Lord Shiva. And they say that the first begotten of creation is the Lord Shiva. Of course, the Lord Shiva 
<coughs> is that primordial light or that we call the ray of Okidanok and which we represent with the letter He that already we know is uh, associated with the uterus. So the Ein Sof gives birth to that Vav. And that Vav is the Or of the Ein Sof Or. Which, when crystallizing in the universe, becomes Keter, Chochma, Bina, the first triangle. That's why when we refer to the Ein Sof, we refer it as He, the unmanifested He. And we call it Yod He Bav, He, the Ein Sof. In order to pronounce the holy name of God. Obviously, Ketehu Mabina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit form in itself one being, which is represented with the letter Vav, which is in itself also if we examine carefully the letter Yod. Because the letter Yod, which is the first letter of the holy name of God, is related with Keter, which, if you see carefully, that Yod resembles a little flame. If you have a candle, and you light that candle with a match, you will see that that flame has precisely the shape of the letter Yod, which is just a spot of light with that symbol. But if you prolong that Yod down and you stretch it down to Tifereth, which is this, the second uh, sephira, or the sephira, which is in the center of the tree of life. And then clearly you see the letter Vav, which is only the, the lower part of the yod prolonged to, to the bottom. And that's why, when you see that, the name yod he vav he really is yod he yod he so it's just that the third yod which is the bav is that which is of course acting that fire that is acting that's why when you see that light in the candle that stretches up or prolongs then is the letter bav that comes from the yod and that will say that Yod is a phallus, and Bar is a spinal medulla, where that fire has to stand. But in order to do it, it needs the letter He. It needs the uterus. Because the fire cannot extend without the forces of the mother. Because God is father, mother is yod phallus, uterus, man, woman. <coughs> so now you see the holy name of God represented in the first triangle. So the first triangle, Keter Chochma Bina, hides behind the Ein Sof because it emerges from that unknowable. And that's why it is stated that the letter Vav has a double aspect. Obviously, the hidden aspect, the abstract, that which is unknowable, is behind Keter. Is that or, 
that we call the Ains of Or, the first light that emerges from the Ains of, but is within the unknowable divine. And when expresses in the universe, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the other side of the flame, which is three unity, represented in the Hebrew alphabet in many ways, with the letter Aleph, with the letter Shin, fire. So you see that uh, the upper triangle is always associated with the star of David. With the superior triangle of the star of David. And that's why the Arcanum 6 is always associated with the star of David or the seal of Solomon. And that what in Tibet is called Kama. The symbol of the six-pointed star. Because we find this star not only in the Hebrew pantheon, but also in Buddhism and Hinduism. Esoteric symbols are found uh, in many places. People think, for instance, that uh, the Star of David or the Star of the Seal of Solomon belongs only to the Hebrew uh, pantheon. But we find, I repeat that, in Buddhism, in Hinduism, in America, in among the Mayans, Aztecs, as well as that uh, star, or we will say the cross, the swastika. People think that belongs only to the Nordics. You find the swastika in Buddhism, in Hinduism, among the Mayans, among the Aztecs. It's a very ancient symbol. So we have to start comprehending, understanding, not to associate symbols with certain particular race, because in reality the symbols are universal, represent something that we have to comprehend, because remember, as in the beginning we start, we stated, Yorge Bav. Bina is Val and means understanding. That ability of comprehending, understanding the word. And not only the Hebrew word, but the Sanskrit word, Ita uh, Latin words, Greek words, because there are many scriptures in many languages that hide different things. Like, for instance, mythology. Among the Romans and Greeks, all the stories, legends, tales in mythology hide always something that we had to grasp. But for that, the awakening of that hearing power or the Vishuddha Chakra is necessary, especially with the mental body. Because remember that the true human being has seven bodies. The physical body, the vital body, the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, the conscious body, and the spiritual body. So each body has his chakra vishuddha. But the one that gives us that comprehension of that word is especially related with the Sephirah Netzach, which is the mind. Because it's the mind precisely that uh, uh, you use in order to write the word, in order to pronounce the word, as I am using it right now, my mind. And even to write. That's why the Bible especially written 
is written uh, in such a way that when people read it, literally, he reads only a story, legends, something that sometimes makes sense, sometimes that doesn't make any sense. But when you read it with the chakra Vishuddha, and then you see behind everything. That, of course, faculty of hearing is associated with the faculty of seeing, which is related with the lecture, the previous lecture that the speaker talked very clear in the last uh, Saturday. He, faculty of seeing. Behold, law, see. But in order to see, you have to hear, to understand, and to see that which is behind the letter. And of course, that is what, in synthesis, is called superlative intuition. <coughs> intuition is a faculty associated with all the faculties. Clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy. The death precisely the power of the human being. Intuition. Of course, the lower level of that intuition is in the heart, hunches. But when we arrive at the superlative intuition, we have to have all the chakras in activity and to use it in one way. That intuition is precisely the faculty that develops when we are here and now, when we know how to listen. Remember the lecture that the Master Samael on the Or gave us to know how to listen. For that, we have to be here and now. Because the war is pronounced, and you have to grasp that with your consciousness. And according to your level, to comprehend it. This, in order to comprehend more about, because we are talking about the flame. Because God is fire. This is how Moses found God. In the burning bush. And always when one somebody experiences the essence of God, finds fire. And that's why if you observe all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, resemble fire. Flames of fire. Because the word is fire. So that fire is precisely behind everything. So that bath, that flame is behind everything. Every abstract and concrete element in the universe. So therefore, intuition is that faculty of the fire. That's why in Sanskrit, that fire, universal fire, is called Vishnu. Precisely the fire that is associated with creation. <coughs> because as we explained in the beginning, if we stretch the letter Yod down to Tifereth, we have the letter Vav. But in order to pass or to go into Tifereth, it has to forcefully pass through that. And this is how the sun, Chokhmah, wisdom, through Da'at, enters into the world of creation. Because the second triangle of the tree of life is related with Bria, the world of creation. And Da'at here, this mysterious Sephirah, which encompasses all the tree of life, is a union of yod -Heh. Abba and Aima, or Ima, mother, father. And from that emerges 
the letter Vav, because the father is Yod, the mother is He, and from them emerges Vav, which is the manifested universe, the outcome of creation. And that's why we said that Vishnu, which is precisely the manifested chokma in creation, means he who penetrates in everything. And that's fire. Avalokiteshvara is also that which is everywhere. Same meaning. And when you find the word chokma, which means in English wisdom, then you find that the word wisdom is made of two words, this and dom. This means to see, and dom means power. The power to see or the power to be there in everything. And that is Chokhma, that is Vishnu, Avalokiteshvara. So then you find that the letter Vav is precisely the first associated with that first word written in the Bible, Bereshit. And always, when we talk about creation, we arrive at Bereshit, which has many meanings. But the main one that we always state is in wisdom. God created because within Bereshit is hidden Wisdom is hidden chokmah within Bereshith is Vishnu, Avalokiteshvara, the word, is hidden the word. And behind, I, I repeat again, chokmah is the first sephirah, the tree of life, that in the world of Asiluth receives the name of yod he vav he yod Hava. And that's why this yod Hava, Yahovah, is hidden within Vav, within Bereshit, who was in the beginning. And that's why you find in the card, the sixth, which is indecision, above, you find eros. Of course, an Egyptian uh, symbols, which is the Cupid with his ball and arrow. That Cupid, eros, is always associated with the sexual force erotic eros and obviously when we speak in this way we bring from Greek language from the Greece from Greece the Trimurti of the Greeks chaos hea and eros that's the Trimurti of uh, the Greeks eros the Holy Spirit, Bina, Shiva. Shabbat is, of course, making the triangle with the bow and the arrow. You see very clear the upper triangle used by Bina, Eros. But that is pointing at the head of Medusa, the whore. The harlot, because that upper triangle is against the ego. But this upper triangle 
is represented, as you know, in different religions with different names. Ketejo, Ma, Binah, in Kabbalah. Chaos, Hea, in Eros, the Trimurti of the Greeks. And then we find uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Christianity. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva in Hinduism. <coughs> but we have to comprehend and understand the different Trimurtis. Because when we talk about these Trimurtis that we are talking here, the upper triangle of these arrows is a Holy Trinity pointing at the head of the Medusa to kill her. But there is another triangle that we explain here. When the letter Bab descended to Tifereth, we explain that in that you find Abba and Aima, father and mother. Means that this triangle transforms itself into the duality. As you can see that uh, the triangle explained in this physical level is uh, the three brains that we have. The intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the motor, instinctual, sexual brain. The three brains are making the physical body that we use. And if you imagine in front of you a woman, or if you are a woman, if you imagine in front of you a man, obviously you find there the duality. But each entity has three brains. The same happens in that. Ava has three forces. Aima has three forces. Meaning that within the father is the Trimurti, and within the mother is also the Trimurti. But that mysterious division happens in Bina. And that's why it's written that Chokmah descends into the world of creation through that Bina duality. In order to make another triangle. And that triangle is here. Explain it in the lower part of the tree of life. Which in Christianity explains at Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. The word Joseph, I al uh, we always uh, uh, de decompound that word as Eo, Cephas. Cephas is a stone and Eo is a duality, the polarity. Eo, Cephas. And Mary is Ram Eo as well, the feminine aspect of the stone. And from that emerges Jesus, which is Yeshua, the Savior. Of course, in ancient Egypt, that trinity was represented by Osiris. Because the Holy Trinity, Ketejo Mabina in Egypt, is named with one word, with one title, Osiris Ra. Ra, which is the solar force, of course. So when you say, when you say, you say in Egypt, Osiris Ra, you are saying Ketejo Mabina together. And when you said Isis, you said Ketejo Mabina together in the feminine aspect. But there, this is why Osiris Ra and Isis are in that united. And from them emerges Arus, Horus the sun. So do not mistake that trinity with the upper triangle. That trinity belongs to the world of creation. Osiris, Isis, Horus. The world of creation. Not to the world of Atziluth, which is Ketejo Mabina. And of course here we find that the power of Bina in the first triangle which is represented by the letter Bav, receives the name in the world of Atziluth of El Shaddai when associating it with Yesod because Binah controls the third triangle of the tree of life 
associated with sex in Yesod. Yesod is sex, the sexual force. El Shaddai, the power of the sexual force. And that's why El Shaddai, the Holy Spirit, Binah, is the one that gives the pact to Abraham and Sarah. So, obviously, you find here again the duality. Abraham and Sarah and their child, Isaac, which is Tifereth, obviously. So this Trimurti, or the dissension of the forces, that is explained in the Tree of Life, is represented in many religions, with many names. If you study religions, you will find that, of course, Abraham has, as you know already, in Egypt, which represents Malkut, another son, which is Ishmael. But that's physical creation. When Isaac is a spiritual creation, Isaac is related with the letter Vav, with the spinal column, the fire that rises in the spinal column. To be a child of Isaac, is to be an initiate, somebody that is rising, creating all of that which is symbolically written in the Bible within. <coughs> there are two children in the Bible, according to that pact. Children of Ishmael is the children of Isaac. Isaac, Tifereth are the initiates that belong to the tribe of Judah, Leo, the constellation of Leo, the solar force. And the other Ishmael, the one that are children of Egypt, are my body and everybody in the physical plane. Of course, it's Kabbalistically speaking. So obviously, we have to inquire and to see in the pact with Isaac, which is internal. That fire that we had to awake, which is Yeshua, related with Christianity, Horus in Egypt. And that's precisely the representation also of the upper triangle of that Heros, of that uh, Cupid above the letter of the Arcanum number six, which, of course, in Sanskrit, we call it Atman Buddhi Manas. The upper triangle also, which represents the monad, Atman, Hesed, Buddhi, Gebura and Manas, Tifereth. So you see how everything is in different names, different languages, different religions, always pointing at the same thing. That's a triangle that we had to be united with. And that's why in many lectures or in many books of the Master Samael on the Or, <coughs> he points always at different triangles, always above. But we have now to go the triangle below, which you see in the graphic of the card, indecision, the six arcana. You, you see there the human soul represented by that uh, personage in the center of the card, whose legs are on the water or in the water because the third level always of the car symbolizes the waters so below that or in that water you find the inverted triangle 
that inverted triangle is related with us, represented by the three traitors that always are against the work of God. Those three traitors are always found in different uh, symbols among many religions. But in synthesis, represents Satan. And obviously, the black triangle. Here, we have to understand how the triangle is associated with us. The soul, which is crossing his arms, you see that the left arm is over the right and making a cross, an X. Because of the left is on the right, it is saying that he is not doing the will of God, but his own will. Because in order to make the will of God, the right has to be over the left. And that's easy to see. Sometimes when you ask the person, cross your arms over your chest, automatically they put the left on the right. To start putting the right on the left is precisely very difficult. Because we always associate that with evil will. Observe the, the mummies in Egypt. They always have the right arm over the left. They do the will of the upper triangle. But here, this man of this card is obviously doing his own will, not the will of God, because his face is towards the Merusa, towards the whore, towards the harlot. And he's not seeing his divine mother, which is on the right side. Of course, we had to work very hard in order to turn the face towards the right. In order to see God, his female, female aspect, which is love. And he's turning towards the left, where the Medusa is, because he's obviously a slave of the lower triangle. The three traitors, as you know, are related with the three brains that we have. Because we have three brains, and many times we explain that these three brains are associated with the upper triangles, the energies that descend into the physical body. The first brain is the cerebral and spinal nervous system related with the energies of the father which unfortunately the demon of the mind utilizes and squanders. Then we have uh, the cerebrum, uh, the grand sympathetic nervous system, which is related with the energy of the sun, Chokhmá, which is, is squandered by Kaifas the evil will, in the heart, by satisfying desires. Because in that area of the heart, in the navel, we have the negative emotions of lust, anger, fear, gluttony, laziness, anxiety, self-esteem, pride, you name them. And the other brain is the motor instinctual sexual brain, the parasympathetic nervous system called also vagus, where the energies of the Holy Spirit, Bina, circulate. But there's Judas there, the demon of desire, 
It satisfies his sexual appetites in that center, in that brain. Those are the three traitors, Pilate, Caiaphas, and Judas. It's related with the three brains that we have within. Kore, Datan, and Abiram, the three traitors that make the life impossible to Moses in the wilderness. Moses is the will of God, performs the will of God. And of course, the three traitors are three demons represented in the Egyptian Book of the Dead with three names. The demon of desire is called Apopi. The demon of the mind is called Hai. And the demon of evil will, Nept. Three traitors. And no matter how we name them, the truth is that they are within us. There is not a single person in this planet that does not have them. They are pretty chubby and strong. And those are the three traitors. Because they squander the energy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our body. That's the ego. That's Satan. We will say that the ego is the word of Satan made flesh in each one of us. That's why it's written that Jesus said, You are children of the devil. And the lust of the devil you want to fulfill. He was a murderer from the beginning. And a liar. Obviously, the ego lies. Because he's the contrary of the truth. The father. It's a murderer. Because fornicates. And anyone that fornicates is a murderer. It's a murderer of his own soul, his own being. Obviously, life is God. Anything that goes against life is against God. How difficult it is to be really a child of God. But the letter Vav has a power to transform anybody into a child of God. But for that, we have to deal with the star of David. With the star Kama, the seal of Solomon. Do you see this is something here very uh, important? That they call it the Kama, the symbol of the sixth star. And Kama means uh, desire or, or karma as well. Yeah. Yeah. Karma. Yeah, and also Kama Sutra. But this Kama is desire. But it's also related, obviously, with the lower triangle, in which we have to transform. And it is because the three primary forces of the universe are those forces that create, because we said. Those three primary forces, plus the Ein Sof, are always behind any creation. That's why the Master Samael states that the Ninth Sphere, where those three forces work, is the origin of planets, moons, suns, gods, angels, demons, and human beings. Everything comes from it. It depends how it is transformed. So obviously, the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the human kingdom is Malkut, the kingdom, in which these forces of fire are hidden. You find those forces everywhere. And they act 
according to the will of God. But unfortunately, when we arrive at this state in which we are, we receive the doctrine, the knowledge, in order for, for us to learn how to do the will of God individually. Because in the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and mineral kingdom, the will of God is done collectively. You observe animals, you observe plants, everything obeys Allah. Mechanically, automatically, collectively. The intelligences of the Elohim, which means creators, Elohim, or Yod Chava Elohim, enter into the planet and organize that. And all the elementals, souls of the elements, obey. That's why in Eden it's paradise, because all the elementals obey the will of the cosmos creators that enter into their souls. Those souls obey. But when we reach the level in which we are, the mechanical law of nature goes into devolution. And then these three primary forces, guided by the ego, start creating for devolution. Because the planet, nature, the universe, sustains in two ways. In the evolving way, in the devolving way. The forces that evolve, forcefully has to devolve in order to give stone, hard consistency to the planet. Has to descend. Unfortunately, the ego is made of that material which nature needs in order to give consistency to the planet in the infra dimensions. And unfortunately, our consciousness, our soul, is bottled up. So no matter what you do, your ego will go down. In the beginning, what's going up? So are the protoplasmatic bodies. It's a vehicle of the will of God. But when go down, become the traitors of that solar force because send the soul into hell, into Klippoth. So therefore, we had to work with the lower triangle, because we come from the animal kingdom. And in the animal kingdom, we were obeying the law. We were fornicators. Any cat is a fornicator. Any dog is a fornicator. Any bull is a fornicator. Any horse is a fornicator. Any animal fornicates. That's the will of the animal kingdom. But obviously, they do it according to the law of the cosmo creators, because they don't have reasoning. But when we enter into the level of the intellectual animal, we had to transform that. And we had to stop fornication. And that we receive, the first commandment that we receive when we enter into the human kingdom is, you shall not eat from that tree in the middle of the garden of your body. Because the day that you eat of it, you will not go continue going up. You will go down. You will die. The second death in hell. He's not talking about physical death, which is also related. But the main death that is talking here is the second death in hell. The disintegration of those protoplasmatic bodies and the soul within. As you know, it's written in different symbols. And that's why when we enter here, we have those forces. You say, that's unfair. But that's the plan of God. Because he wants a diamond soul. He wants willpower. In the beginning we have will, but not power. Now where we are in this level, we have to develop willpower. And that power comes from above. That willpower is Tifereth. It's Vav. That willpower is energy, is a Consciousness is the fire of Hohma. It's a fire of the Kundalini that we have to develop in order to create our own individual will. 
and to become into the image of God. Because God uses his will, consciously, wisely. But here, our will is doing wrong things. Every single ego has his own will. Lust uh, wants to fornicate. Pride wants to be better. To rise to the top of the ladder and to say, hey, here I am. Vanity as well. Gluttony, laziness, and all those animal defects, which are wrongly called human defects. Because a human being has no defects. Animal if defects. He might have his mistakes, his errors, but no animal. One thing is an, uh, the intellectual animal, and the other thing is the human being. And that's why here we receive the precepts in order for us to work and to control the elements with willpower. And that's why Tifereth, or in this case, we will say the Burata, the soul, the human soul, is a slave of the inferior triangle because it comes from the animal kingdom and it has to learn how to transform those elements in order to go up from the waters of fornication and to stand in the middle. But for that, it has to turn the face towards the other side. And how do you develop willpower? It's written. It says Bereshith. In the beginning, God created the will of God. Meaning the upper forces created the heaven and the earth. That's the will of God. But in order for that will to create the human being, I have to do it through the letter Vav. That's why if you observe and you read the book of Genesis, it is written, and God said, that and is Bav. It's a spinal column. It's that fire. That's Chokhmah. And the same wisdom, which is written in Bereshith, is just repeated in every end. Because it's Bav, Bav, and Bav. It's a Bereshith, 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 always there. But just in one symbol, one letter. And when you see that, you say, oh, I understand that. When you read the Psalms, oh, I understand that, what is saying there. But the translators of the Bible, sometimes they, they omit the, the bab. They just said end. They said but, or they said other things. Right? And then the whole thing is miss, missing. Because they don't know the meaning of the word. Hmm? Because it is written, whosoever knows the meaning of the word, the word gives power to. Nobody can utter it, nobody had uttered it, but only the one that has incarnated it. To incarnate the word is indispensable, but the word is fire. It begins with the transmutation of the sexual energy. And that's why it's written, and God said, and Elohim said. And it's because all the inheritance of the cosmo creator, the Elohim, which are already self-realized up there in the world of Yetzirah, and the world of Bria, and the world of Atziluth, they send the Ruach Elohim in order for that to float upon the face of the waters, the Akasa, that many times we talk about. But here we are talking about that Akasa or sexual waters, the semen, the substance that is El Shaddai in the sexual organs. But in us is Shaddai El Hai, the power that we have there. 
That Shaddai el Chai, that semen, that seed, has the power of the Elohim in potency. Because that's the plan of the Elohim to create the human being. And that's why they place all of those forces that we need in order to develop the human being, the microcosmos, or as we said in Kabbalah, the Zerampin, which is the one that has to be below the Arikampin. You see, this is another triangle here of the, of the, star, of the Seal of Solomon. The upper triangle is Arikampin, Ketejo Mabina, whose body is formed by all the Sephiroth in the world of Atsiluth. And the lower triangle should be, must be, Serampin, the lower continents, which is the human being to the image of God, the letter Vav. But in order for that Serampin to emerge in the sixth day, why sixth day? Why not in the fifth? Why didn't God created man in the first day, in the second? Why in the sixth? Because his Bab is six. And because he is the work of will. Hmm. But the one that does it is God. It doesn't say in the Bible, and Joseph said, or in Mary said, it says, and Elohim said. Meaning that that force, that is in the force guided by the inner being, your inner must have to say it. It's not you. And that's why we always insist that the power in order to self-realize oneself is in the here and now, remembering God. That's the first commandment. You shall love your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your sexual strength, and the neighbor as thyself. So, I mean that you have to use all what you have for your inner being, because he is the one that does the work. He's the master. That's why we here always insist when somebody comes and says, oh, I am the master such and such, or, or such, and with pride of vanity saying, oh, I am the Bodhisattva, the whatever, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. God is the master. And if anybody reaches the master, it's God that is reaching the master. It's the monad. Here low, below, we are just vehicles. We have to be the serf of the Lord. Hear the Psalms. Read the Psalms of David. He never praises himself. He's always talking to God. Yod Chava, because he's inside. I am your servant. Send me your word. What word? That word is Chokmah. That is the Bav. I want to hear your word. And that's why in the website we wrote the letter Bav with the ear. It says, I was in the day of the Lord and I heard behind me the voice of a trumpet. That's the verb, that's the word, that's God. Behind you is the spinal column, the letter Bav. That gives you the power of listening. I said intuition because it's associated with all of the chakras. And then you hear the word of God. And what is God saying to, to John the Divine in the book of Revelation? He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am Aleph and I am Tav. The beginning and the ending. All the letters. Because there in the letter Vav is hidden Bereshith. The development of the man into the image of God. Because God is Aleph to Tav or to, or to Alpha and Omega. All the words. How do you make the words with all the alphabet. If you read the Bible, you find the letter Aleph and the letter Tav everywhere. I mean, the 22 letters, making the word, making the wisdom, what evangelists and many people call, this is the word of God. Yeah, it is the word of God. 22 letters of the alphabet made by the initiates 
that develop that in the spinal column, the 22, the letter Bab, Bereshith. And that's why they have the power of saying it, of understanding it, because they are the living incarnation of the word. This is how you had to read and to understand the scriptures. And God and Elohim said. That's why we say in the sexual transmutation of the sexual energy, God represented in the word that the larynx has to say with willpower, with telema, you transmute Shaddai Ochai in order for Isaac to be born within yourself, within your spiritual nature, Sarah. And then you pronounce the holy name of God, Yod He Vav, which in Hebrew there is no vowels, but Yod is E, He is A, A, that opens. And O is Vav. Because the letter Vav, with that letter you make E, you make O, you make U in Hebrew. It's a way to explain it. The dot below, E. The dot above, E. Uh, o. The Vav in front, in the solar plex, U. So you see and you find the dot, where is it? Then you pronounce it. So the letter Bav, in its case, is O. E A O. That's the second name of God among the Gnostics, Iao. And that's the mantra, the second mantra that you have to pronounce associated with many forces. Iao. When you pronounce Iao in the sexual act, when transmuting the sexual energy, and then God said, let there be light. Because that Iao, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Ketejo Mabina, work in the duality, man, woman, in the sexual act. Ava and Aima, the king and the queen, in Malkut. And El Shaddai releases Isaac, releases Yeshua, releases the fire in the spinal column. And then God said, let there be light. And the mother says, and there was light. Because the light is the outcome. That light, the spinal column, is the outcome of the father and the mother. Iot and He, Abba and Aima. The father gives the, the active and the, the mother the passive. And this is how you make light yourself. And this is how your consciousness receives the electronic force of the Kundalini. Because the consciousness is electronic. And this is how you make light in the darkness. Because in the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. But the earth, as you know, the matter in which we live right now, the physical body, is empty. has no light. And void. And it's a mess. It's, it's, uh, it was uh, empty without form. What means form? No divine form. But the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the Elohim, the forces of the Elohim, the cosmo creators, were floating on the face of the waters, the sexual waters. Knowing that, and then we start, and God said, let there be light. And God said, and God said, and God said. All Genesis is and God said. Because we had to be attuned with the higher forces in order to develop. And in order to that Bab to be illuminated. Because that Bab is the tree of life itself. And then you become and you defeat Medusa. 
So that's the whole work. That's why you see that the star of David, the seal of Solomon, is synthesized there. And if you observe the phallic symbol of the star, easy. You find that the phallus is a yod, always. But the lower testicles of the man are the other sephira, or sephiroth, which means the, the triangle. But in a woman, it's opposite, because the ovaries are up. And the uterus, or yoni, is below. So that's the other triangle. Uniting them in the sexual act, you make the star of David, the seal of Solomon, in order to work. That star is the magical star that gives you birth internally if you know how to handle it. But you have to know that the lower triangle always represents the three traitors that are inside of us. Other symbol of the tree or of the lower triangle, Marcus Samael on the Oris Plains says, is the innermost with the power that deliberates, which is the mind, and the power that executes, which is the personality. That is another explanation. The innermost is, of course, in the spinal nervous system, the cerebral and spinal nervous system, in the throne of God, the innermost. We have to work with it, concentrate in it, remember it, him. Then we control the mind, because that is willpower, the will of God. Thy will be done on this earth or within this earth as it is in heaven. This is obviously, we control the mind, because the brain is a vehicle of the mind. And unfortunately, the mind is animal in us. In us, we have the mind as the den of the, the, den of the defects, animal defects that want always to do the evil will, the animal will. Fornication, adultery, which I repeat here. Watch the animals. Adultery is very common among animals. And all of those things that the Bible talks against the soul that we have to purify our souls are animal. Any lion have many lionesses. Even some, some cats, female cats, have many cats. Dogs, etc. That's normal in the animal kingdom. Fornication and adultery is something very common. So that's why when we enter into this level, we have to fight against that in order to make the will of God. Why? Because we have to be kings and queens of nature. You don't find there in the Bible that Adam is a slave of nature. He commands the folds of the air. He commands the fish of the ocean, the cattle of the earth, and that creature that trips and rides in, this, in the forces, the sexual forces that people call serpent. It's not related, of course, with that innocent animal that sometimes has poison and can kill you. But uh, there are many serpents that have no poisons. It's referring not to uh, that animal, but to us, to this fire. Because that fire creeps, circulates everywhere in our physical body. Right there. Mm -hmm. That's the fire. So, Adam, in the Bible, is the lord of that. Commands nature. Commands the fire, the water, the air, and the earth. But we do not. So we are not Adam. So therefore, we have to control the animal in us. Because that's precisely the part of us that is against the will of God. When you control the animal in you, you are ahead. Because you are becoming a human. God wants to see if his creature, his son, can become a human like him. Because God controls that. God is not a slave 
of the animal appetites that control them. That's the Elohim, the creators. All the angels are that, controlling that. So we have to imitate them. We have to become like God, controlling them, but inside. If we don't control the forces inside, how are we going to control them outside? That's why the Master Samael gives that, that practice in this uh, arcanum. It says, you want to work with the elementals of nature, make a circle around you. And close that circle with the Star of David. Because all the elementals obey that star and tremble behind the seal of the living God, which is the Star of David. Of course, when you work with that star in you, you are controlling the elements, which are within you. If you are a slave of your anger, you are always thundering with anger over the hatred. Then you are a slave of the salamanders of fire. If you are always voluptuous, slave of lust, then you are a slave of the undines and areas of the water. If you are lazy, you don't have to work in yourself. If you don't observe yourself, you are not remembering your God. You are lazy. So you are a slave of the gnomes of the earth because they are diligent. But they are controlling you. And if you are always thinking and thinking and thinking many things, vanity, how to become famous, how to do this, how to do that in order for the people to admire me. You are a slave of the sylphs of the air. You work in the mind. So all the elements work within you, within your consciousness. But unfortunately they are controlling us. And that's why when something happened in the earth, an earthquake, a hurricane, a tsunami, a fire, we are slaves. We are slaves of that. Because we are not kings and queens of nature. Nature controls us. But we are called to be kings and queens by working with the bath. And then we exercise the control with the star of David. Within that star is hidden all the powers of the zodiac. As you know, because the zodiac is related with Chokhmah. And this is how through Chokhmah to that star we place or they place in us all the powers of the zodiac. There is not a single person in this world that do not or does not have the powers of the zodiac in their sexual seed but in potency the powers of nature in their seed but in potency only those that follow the book of genesis and make the book of genesis alive in their psyche they become or they put those elements in activity and that's why they become microcosmoses, Zerampin, made into the image of Arik Ampin, the upper triangle. Remember that, that you have three brains, and that's the lower triangle that has to be in harmony with the upper triangle, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then you become a king. It says that the one that receives, or, or the master explains in one of his books, that passes the ordeal of the sanctuary. Many people think, what is that ordeal of the sanctuary that was placed in the ancient Egypt? He says that whosoever passes that ordeal controls the whole nature, receives the seal of Solomon, the star of David, in his right hand. That ordeal of the sanctuary encloses all of the ordeals that we pass from the beginning to the end. All of them. All the fire, water, air, and earth. All the ordeals. Would you name them in the path from the beginning to the end? That's the ordeal of the sanctuary. 
And you pass that, you receive the ring. means you achieve resurrection. But if you touch it with your left hand, you lose it. Meaning, what this personage in the car did, put the left arm over the right, doing his own will, fornicating, in other words. Because when you touch the ring with your left, meaning you fornicate. And then you lose everything. There are many fallen angels that touch the, re- the ring of Solomon with the left hand. And they are fallen angels. Any fallen angel become a demon that can rise again if God allows it. Because it is God that said it. If God said it, he can rise. But if God doesn't say it, there are demons that fall into damnation. Because every time that they rise again, Chokhmah is the one that does it to the letter Bab and suffers the consequences. More wisdom, more suffering, more pain. So you find there then why the number six is associated with the sixth commandment. You shall not fornicate, which many people mistake with you shall not commit adultery, which is the nine. Or you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. That's the nine. But the six is you shall not commit fornication, which means literally related with the losing of the seed. And that's why. The number six encloses salvation, incarnation, the mystery of the soul, and the mystery of the human being. The number six is the letter Bab that unites our physical personality with the supreme immanence of the solar father. With the ends of all. So there is how we go up into heaven. Do you have questions? What's the significance? Is it even though the, the command there is facing the, his left, his feet are facing the right. Yeah, the question is, why is that that the face is, loose, is uh, looking at the left, but his feet are going to the right? It's meaning that he is in the size, in decision. Where to go? To go uh, to the right or to the left? To look back at the eagles. To look back at the eagles. Yeah, he's facing forwards. If he's looking at my mother, that's correct. Yeah. Exactly. He's looking backwards because the 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 Medusa, the harlot there, which is naked, only covered with a a little thin, is obviously representation of lust, representation of the ego. But he should, in the beginning, you know, that's precisely the point. In the beginning, when you know the the doctrine of Vav. You want to walk towards your Divine Mother. But because you have a lot of ego, mechanically, automatically, you always look towards your back, I mean, towards towards the ego, to the animal level. And that's why the whole work is to keep walking towards your Divine Mother and turn completely your head towards her. And that means comprehension, which is precisely the letter above, understanding of your animal nature, how to transform that animal into a man, how to transform the donkey into a man. That's difficult because the donkey, donkey is a stubborn, yeah? Wasn't it, uh, was it Hercules that was walking with, um, was it told not to look back at Medusa? 
No, the question is, is Hercules the one that was uh, commanded not to turn and back and to see through the Medusa? But no, that, that's the story of Orpheus. Orpheus is the one that also represents the letter Bab in this case, that descends into hell, into his infra dimensions, infra consciousness, etc., in order to bring his soul from hell. That soul is called Eurydice. Eurydice that was bitten by a, a, a serpent. You see, that's the same meaning of Adam and Eve there. Eurydice is bitten by a serpent and dies and goes to hell. And then Orpheus, which is the upper force related with the upper triangle, goes into hell in order to bring her back. But then Pluto, the king of hell, which represents the instinctual forces of the physical body, because Pluto is also a god, which means that the forces of the cosmic creator works automatically there and in nature also. But you have to know how to control, how to transform them. And Pluto says, well, go, but don't look back. Because if you look back, you will lose it. And he is playing the, the leer, right? Bringing uh, the soul back. And the soul is chasing him. But he doubts, like anybody. He says, maybe he's not following me. Maybe he's not behind me. And when he turns and looks back, and then he loses, he loses her. And Pluto says, you lost, out of here, no soul for you. <laughs> well, you remember that the same thing is written in the Bible. With Lot and his wife, when he's going out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels, three angels. Mm -hmm. So behold here the Holy Trinity, very symbolic. He says, don't turn back. But the wife turns back and becomes a statue of salt, meaning devolution into the mineral kingdom. So therefore, when you enter into this path, don't turn back. Don't go back into your vices and errors. Always ahead. Always ahead. For those people that turn back into their vices and errors, they are like uh, the wife of Lot. Go in, are the one, is that that with the people that are enamored with the world, with money, with fame, with my last name, with my religion, what people will say if I do this, what my family, what my relatives, etc., etc., and then turn back because they don't want to lose that. So they go into the devolution, in other words, they become stagnant. Don't look back, go ahead and let the dead bury their dead. Do you have any other question? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gebura is always, always connected. Obviously, is it the ascension of the of the of the ray of creation in the tree of life that we have? All the sephiroth are connected. Uh -huh. Is the second uh, head in God connected to that? All of them. All of them are connected to that. Because remember that the first triangle, Ketejo Mabina, are represented in one. It's called a tree unity. Anyone that descends into that, obviously, is connected with all of, all of them. But this is explanation of uh, the upper triangle. And how do we have to follow? The tree of life, really, the ten sephiroth, when you see it, it, you can see it in different angles, different ways, in order to comprehend 
But remember here that the main thing of this uh, arcanum is willpower. We need willpower. That's why uh, our website is telema, because that's the Greek word for willpower. We need willpower in order to do this. But do not think that you will do it only by yourself, without the assistance of God. Because will is precisely, as you know, the will of doing something. But the power comes from above. Elementals do not have willpower. They have will. Only the human being has willpower. Yes, what is the question? You mentioned that the personality can be united with the monad. Uh, I thought the Master Samael said that the personality does not survive. Well, I never said that the personality could be united with the monad. I said that the lower triangle also represents the innermost, that is the power, the power that deliberates, which is the mind, and the, the personality, that is the power that executes. Obviously, when the personality and the mind do whatever they want, then the innermost loses his vehicle. That's why we have to remember always the innermost. But also, if we follow the explanation of this <coughs> personality, we have to understand that in the end, we have to develop our own particular personality associated with God. It has nothing to do with that egotistical personality that we have here. It had to do with that personality because every single being in heaven is a person, is individual, has different attributes, certain powers certain duties. That's a person, a personality. But it's not the type of personality that we have here. It's a heavenly personality, which is one with the universal personality, which is God. It's a multiple perfect unity. And associated also with the universal mind. That's the, the, the real ser serampin. The one whose innermost is controlling his own mind, solar mind, and whose personality, the one that executes, is doing his work under the will of God. Solar personality, no lunar, like the one that we have. Understand? Yeah. Why is the, uh, the Medusa above the water? Well, why is the Medusa above the water? Because all the impressions that we receive are always related with the brain. This area, of course, physical or mental area, we see that the impressions that we receive, we receive it through the five senses. And uh, if we identify with those forces or energies that comes into our brains, then we create elementals, or I mean, no elementals, uh, elements, which are subjective, lunar, negative, which is related with the ego. But if we know how to transform the impressions, if we turn towards the right, obviously the forces, universal forces of divine mother, that akasa element become positive substances, elements, vehicles that make the human being. Meaning that we have to control the senses. By controlling the senses, we control sensations, impressions. Remember that as intellectual animals, we are or we have our central of gravity in the mind, in the intellect. And that's why this is, this is how it's working in this day and age. But remember always that the upper triangle is against the medusa, the arrow, you know, understood? You were talking before about that the devote is actually an extension of the yod. Mm -hmm. Could you say, I don't know if you said this, but could you also say then that um, the, phallus, the yod or the phallus is, or the 
Vulgus, the phallus extended or erect? That the bab is the phallus extended? Well, we can we can say that obviously because the yod gives the, the extension of the force of the man. That's why uh, in some uh, uh, times, in some ways, we said that vav is the man, right? But really, the the letter that symbolizes the sexual organ is yod, and uh, vav obviously is an extension of that yod, which is the man. And the man is a, 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 is a difference between a woman because of the phallus. Even, even in, the, in Genesis, you find that the word that explains the word man is ish. Hmm? When you explain about the male, ish. And if you observe how ish is written, you find that it's written with the letter aleph, the letter Yod and the letter Shin. Shin is fire. Aleph is wind. And the Yod is the phallus. Shin, the power, the active power of God. Remember what we learned in Aleph. But when God is creating the woman, and then he named the woman Isha. And if you observe the word in Hebrew, the word Isha, which is the feminine aspect of the fire, because Ish is fire, you find that Isha is written Aleph, Shin, and He. And you know that the letter He is a symbol of the uterus. But in order to write that, they took the Yod that was in the middle of Ish, is out. So the woman has no yod. The woman has he. And here you find the, 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 the beautiful or the word of Kabbalah. Yod. Ish. Isha. Mel. Man. is talking directly to the fire. Ida pingala. Yin yang. This is how it's written. Uh... That's Ish, Aleph, Yod, Shin, and Isha is like that. So the Yod is out in order to make the woman. So God, in order to make the woman, took the Yod out of it. Hmm? Well, you find, you find there that, but it's not. I mean, this is a feminine aspect of the fire, but it's not written there. No, but I mean, in the Ish, man, mm -hmm. yod is, it's not really pronounced. Well, it's not pronounced, but it's there. It is because it's the yod, it's the phallus, it's, it's, it's the male. And this is yod is a man, he is a woman. And this is God. Up. Fire and air. And this is it. Thank you very much. See you or hear you next Saturday. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,